your faith will make you well. Your faith will promote your business. Your faith will give you breakthroughs. It is your faith that determines. The words we speak show our faith. Believe what your God is saying. Because your God is saying something. Oh, welcome for this glorious service as we celebrate Mother's Day as we honor mothers in the house as we honor mothers who men are not here with us let's always recognize that God the care of God the love of God supersedes that of our mothers if your mother has cared for you God cares for you much more another thing for this month how we remember us I have a glorious destiny in Christ and I said last Sunday which was the first day of the month this month you will experience greater fruitfulness in your life you will be fruitful in the works of your hands in your business in the fruit of your womb in Jesus precious name so I would like to continue with the teaching series began last Sunday. The believers destiny in Christ. Part 2. The believers destiny in Christ part 2. We say destiny is that which God has decided in advance. God decided in advance. Hatima ni ule uamuzi wa Mungu ambao aliamua kabla. A future that God decided or determined in advance. We gave the example of two people. Begin with Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 1. Verse 5. God spoke to him that before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you, set you apart. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. For Jeremiah, being a prophet was his destiny. A future that God had determined. In advance. Before he was even formed. God had already determined. That Jeremiah. You won't be a carpenter. You will not be a medical doctor. You will be a prophet. To the nations. And you go to whosoever I send you to. And you speak whatsoever I command you to say. The second example, we look at Paul. Galatians chapter 1 verse 15. Say he was set apart from his mother's womb. When it pleased God who separated me or set me apart from my mother's womb and called me through his grace. Lakini Mungu alienitenga tangu tumboni mwa mama yangu akaniita kwa neema yake. Do you know what it means to be called by his grace? Unajua unajua kinamaanisha nini kuitwa kwa neema? You are not qualified. Yaani wewe inamaanisha wewe hujahitimu. You are not you are not to the standard. Yaani haufiki kile kiwango. By the time Paul was being called and, and answering the call mwito, he was hunting for Christians. Alikuwa anatafuta wa Kristo. He was arresting them. Alikuwa anawashika and supporting them to be murdered. At that time, bishops have said, no, he's no fit. That's what they will say. He's already arresting us. In fact, they did not accept him easily among the believers. He was not fit. It's a calling of grace. 
for the unqualified kwa wale wasio stahili for those who do not merit kwa wale ambao hawajahitimu that's how god calls people hivyo ndivyo mungu huita you are called the way you are wewe umeitwa jinsi ulivyo praise the lord ana asifiwe shout hallelujah haza sauti hallelujah So he separated then God revealed his son to him to preach him to the Gentiles. Alipotengwa alafu Mungu akamfunua mwanawe kwake ili akahubiria mataifa. If you read that father. Ukisoma ukiendelea pale. So we said we are looking at three aspects of our destiny in Christ. Tulisema tunaangalia pengele vitatu ya hatima yetu ndani ya Kristo. And we looked at the first one last Sunday. Na tukaangalia kwanza Jumapili iliyopita. From Ephesians chapter 1, let's look at that. Kutoka kwa Efeso mlango wa kwanza tuangalie hiyo. We read verse 4 and 5 from New Living Translation. Mstari wa 4 na wa 5. Ephesians chapter 1. Wa Efeso mlango wa kwanza. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. Kama vile alivyotuchagua katika yeye kabla ya kuweka misingi ya ulimwengu ili tuwe watakatifu watu wasio na hatia mbele zake katika pendo. Before the world. Kabla kuumba ulimwengu. Before he set the foundation. Yaani kabla hajaweka misingi. He chose he ali, loved us. Alitupenda and chose us. Na akatuchagua. That in Christ. Ya kwamba ndani ya Kristo. That when we come into Christ. Kwamba tutakapokuja ndani ya Kristo. We shall be holy and without fault. Tutakuwa watakatifu wasio na lawama. Verse 5. Sari 5. God decided in advance that's destiny he decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bring us to himself through Jesus Christ this is what he wanted to do it gave him great pleasure kwa kuwa alitangulia kutuchagua ili tufanywe wanawe kwa njia ya Yesu Kristo sawa sawa na uradhi wa mapenzi yake so we can see there that As we mentioned last Sunday, hivyo tunaweza kuona hapo kama tulivyotaja jambo aspect of our destiny, kwamba sehemu ya kwanza ya hatima yetu is that we we'll be adopted as sons of God. Ni kwamba tutafanywa kuwa wana wa Mungu. Through Christ. Kupitia Kristo. That means God did it through Christ. Yeye inamaanisha Mungu ameifanya kupitia Kristo. We are sinners. Tulikuwa wenye dhambi. So Jesus died for our sins. Lakini Yesu akafa kwa ajili ya dhambi. We were dead spiritually. Tulikuwa tumekufa. So he raised us together with Christ. Hivyo akatufufua pamoja na Kristo. And then brought us to himself. Alafu akatuleta kwake. Holy without any blame wasio na lawama yoyote before him mbele zake as his own sons kama wanawe so you being a son of god hivyo wewe kuwa mwana wa mungu being a child of god kuwa mtoto wa mungu is your destiny in christ yani ni hatima yako ndani ya kristo that's what god wanted to do hivyo ndivyo mungu alivyotaka kufanya and he did it through christ na akaifanya and then he called you alafu sasa akakuita through the gospel kupitia injili and you answered na ukajibu when you answered All your sins are forgiven. You were justified. Yani wewe ulihesabiwa haki. Made right with God. Ukafanywa haki. And then you were made alive together with Christ. Alafu sasa ukafanywa hai pamoja na Kristo. And now, na sasa you have been glorified. Umetukuzwa. You sit with Christ in heavenly places. Umekaa pamoja na Kristo mahali juu mbinguni. So today we like to focus on the second aspect of our destiny in Christ. Leo tungependa kuangazia kipengele cha pili ya hatima yetu ndani ya Kristo. And we will take that from Romans chapter 8. Na tunachukua kutoka kitabu cha Warumi mlango wa 8 verse 29. New King James and then we also read New Living Translation. Tasoma tafsiri tofauti tofauti. Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8 verse 29. Warumi mlango wa 8 mstari wa 29. For whom he did for new he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren maana wale aliyowajua tangu asili aliwachagua tangu asili wafananishwe na mfano wa mwana wake ili yeye awe mzaliwa wa kwanza miongoni mwa ndugu wengi that's what he determined hivyo ndivyo alivyoamua in advance yani kabla that they would be like his son kwamba wawe kama wanawe now the first aspect we saw that we become sons of god sehemu ya kwanza tuliona kwamba tumekuwa wana wa mungu the second aspect is that we are not just sons of god we are sons of god who are like the son of god yani sehemu ya pili ni kwamba sisi sio wana tu sisi ni wana kama yule mwana wa mungu we are not just sons of god sio ati sisi ni wana we are sons of sons of god sisi ni wana wa mungu who are like ambao ni kama the son of god jesus christ yule mwana wa mungu yesu kristo we are like him sisi ni kama yeye Praise the Lord. To be conformed to the image of his son. Tufananishwe na mfano wa mwana wake. Not just a son. Sio tu mwana. But a son who has the image of Christ. Lakini mwana mwenye taswira ama sura kama ya mwanawe. A son who is in the likeness of Christ. Mwana ambaye amefananishwa na Kristo. Look at the New Living Translation. Kalia tafsiri nyingine. Verse 29. Sari 29. For God knew his people in advance. That's the predestination. And he chose them to become like his son to become like who? Wawe kama nani? 
Not just sons of God, but sons of God who are like his sons, Jesus Christ. So that his son will be the firstborn or the senior brother among many brothers and sisters. Jesus Christ is our senior brother. We are his brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord. We are not just sons of God. We are sons of God who are destined to be conformed to be molded to be shaped after the image of Jesus Christ. Tell your neighbor I'm like Jesus Christ. You are not Christ but you are like praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. So we are not just sons of God. We are sons of God who are in the image of the Son of God. So, God worked it out such that whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ becomes a Son of God who is like Jesus Christ. He is conformed to that image or in that likeness. Let's look at Galatians 3 verse 26. If you read further here in Romans, he said now, those people he predestined, he called them. He called them through the gospel. Every time sinners hear the gospel, there is a call of God to respond. And those who respond positively, he justifies them. He makes them right with himself. And those he justifies, he glorifies. Galatians 3 verse 26. I, I just want to see that it's through faith in Christ become a child of God. For you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. That's how to become a child of God. It's not by adjustment of your behavior. It is by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. You become a child of God. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are a child of God. You are a son of God. You can say it anywhere. There is no further proof. No further evidence of being a child of God apart from faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Say, okay, your behavior. There are people who behave better than Christians. But they are not God's children. Praise the Lord. I'd like to appreciate that it is faith in Jesus Christ that makes you a child of the living God. Makes you a son of God. Are we saying good behavior is not good? It's very good and important. But it should be the result of you being changed inwardly. First, you are a child of God. Then behave accordingly. Behavior can't make you a child of God. Now we also read Galatians 4. I'd like just to from verse 4. We checked on that. We checked that last Sunday. Galatians chapter 4 verse 4. When the right time came, God sent his son born of a woman subject to the law. Hata ulipo wadia utimilifu wa wakati, mungu alimtuma mwanawe, ambaya mezaliwa na wanamke, amezaliwa chini ya sheria. Verse 5. Daru watano. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. Even though God wanted to adopt us as his children, that is 
our destiny Hiyo ndio hatima yetu Jesus said to come Yesu alibidi aje and free us from the bondage of the law Ili atuweke huru kutokana na kifungo cha sheria and atone for our sins Yaani ili alipie dhambi zetu and fulfill the law on our behalf Na atimize sheria kwa niaba yetu and then put us under grace Alafu sasa tuweke chini ya neema So when the right time came Hivi wakati wa sawa alipoadia He sent his own son Alimtuma mwanawe wa pekee For God so loved the world Kwa kuwa Mungu alipenda ulimwengu He gave his only son Akapeana mwana wa pekee His begotten son so that whosoever will believe in him he will not perish but he will have eternal life so Jesus came to take care of the problem that was between God and people he loved tell your neighbor there is no more problem between you and God there was a problem and Jesus died to sort, sort out that problem So he sent us to buy freedom for us. We are free from the law because of what Jesus has done for us. Next verse. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts prompting us to call out Abba Father. Na kwa kuwa ninyi mmekuwa wana, Mungu alimtuma roho wa mwanawe mioyoni mwetu aliaye Abba yani Baba. The spirit of Christ is in us. Roho wa Kristo yuko ndani yetu. So the big question is, Hivyo swali kubwa ni, Are we now children of God or are we becoming? Je, sasa tu wana wa Mungu ama tunafanywa kuwa wana Are we now already like Jesus or are we progressively becoming like Jesus? Je, tayari tuko kama Yesu ama ndiyo tunaanza kuwa kama Yesu? So let's move on to Ephesians 4 verse 24. Twende kwa Waefeso 4:24. And we read that from the Amplified translation and New Living translation. Ephesians 4 verse 24. Waefeso 4 mstari wa 24. Give us the Amplified says, "I'm put on the new nature." the regenerate self the regenerate self is the new man the regenerated self is a new man huyo mtu anayefanya upya ni yule mtu ndani if you are born again you have a new man in you kama umezaliwa mara ya pili uko na mtu mpya ndani yako you are new, a new spirit yani right? wewe ni roho mpya that's why you are a new creature ndio sababu wewe ni kiumbe kipya a new creature yani kiumbe kipya created a new in christ umeumbwa upya ndani ya kristo so that's what he calls a regenerate self hiyo ndio anaita uumbwaji upya and it has a new nature na iko na asili mpya praise the lord so i say put on the new nature the regenerate self created in God's image god like in true righteousness and holiness mkavae utu upya ulioumbwa kwa namna ya Mungu katika haki na utakatifu wa kweli hiyo mkavae na maanisha tujavaa si ndio put on it means we have no put on but it means it is there lakini maanisha iko hapo i would like to uh, take note Ngependa the new nature kini. is already there ile asili mpya iko pale tayari now what he's saying is that you put it on kila anachosema pale ni kwamba muivae the new nature is created in god's image ile asili mpya imeumbwa katika mfano wa mungu you already have a new nature tayari uko na hiyo asili it's created in god's image imeumbwa katika mfano wa mungu it's god like nani ni kama mungu it's christ like ni kama kristo and a description is given is righteous and holy na maelezo mayekwa pale kwamba ni wenye haki na takatifu there is already a new nature tayari kuna asili mpya everyone born again ndani ya kila aliyezaliwa mara kuna new creation kuna ni kiumbe kipya the bible says if anyone is in christ is what maandiko yanasema yote yake ndani ya kristo ni kiumbe kipya second corinthians 5:17 don't take us there korinto 2:5:17 anyone is in Christ anyone in Christ is a new creation no matter how they are behaving is a new creation no matter how they are living if he is in Christ is a new creation but now there is a call to put on the new nature we discuss that more next Sunday on putting on the new nature I like to focus on the new man the new man is created in God's image the one inside you is in God's image he is God like he is Christ like he is truly holy and righteous Tell your neighbor you are holy inside. You may not be behaving be behaving like a holy person. But you are holy. Those are you see uh, a nature and practice are two different things. A nature is who you are. Your nature. So the nature a believer has is God like. That's what God wanted to do. Hivyo ndivyo Mungu alivyotaka. He wanted to have children. Alitaka awe na wana by adopting them through Christ. Kwa kuwafanya wake kupitia Kristo. Wa takatifu. Enough. 
for him to live in them and to relate with them. And who are righteous, who have right standing with God and they achieve this through Christ. So he predestined us to be conformed to the image of his son. If we have a spiritual x-ray and then we scan any believer. We see the image of Christ. A God-like image. Praise the Lord. That image inside is God-like. You may not be reflecting it. But you are destined to be. You are destined to be God-like. Praise the Lord. It's your destiny to be God-like in Christ. Anyone in Christ is God-like inside. Created in God's image, God-like in true righteousness and holiness. Praise the Lord. Give us uh, now New Living Translation. Put on your new nature. So there is a new nature, but there is a call to put it on. Just take note of that because next Sunday we'll be dealing on how to put on the new nature. He calls it your new nature. Let's read together. One, two, let's go. Put on your new nature. Created to be like God. Truly righteous and holy. You have a new nature. I say you are new nature. You have a new nature. Now there's a call to put it on. There's a call to put it on. But it's already there. Somebody say I'm a new creation. With a new nature. A new creation with a new nature. This new nature is God-like. That's what God wanted to do. To be conformed to the image of his son. But you do know Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Jesus is the visible God. God is invisible. Jesus is his image. Praise the Lord. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And in verse 14, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Praise the Lord. Shout aloud, Amen. So we have a new nature created in God's image. So you don't acquire new nature by adjusting your behavior. It's created. It's God's creation. It's the work God has done. So when you have that new nature, now there is a call. Put on your new nature. Display your new nature in your manner of life. In the way you are living. Praise the Lord. So the born again spirit is Christ-like. In which way are you like Jesus? In your inward man. The born again spirit is like Jesus. He is Christ like. He is God like. No wonder when you are doing something that is no good. There is conflict. There is conflict inside. Because you are trying to do something that your new nature does not support it. That explains why you feel bad after you've done it. Now, look, if you do something, if you commit sin, do something that is not correct and you are happy and celebrating, your nature is not correct. Because there is conflict, your new nature that is godly does not like what has happened. So, we have a new nature. It's godlike. It's like Christ. It's in our spirit. So in this verse, it's making a call, put on your new nature. And it's righteous and holy. So in our spirit, we are already like Jesus. If you are born again, you have been recreated to be like Jesus, the son of God. God was duplicating Christ in many 
people and then calling them brothers and sisters of Christ. Yani Mungu alikuwa ana muumbisha Kristo katika watu wengi alafu anawaita wa Kristo. Now let's go back and connect this to Galatians 3. We read again verse 26 and mm-hmm. now with 27. Rudi kwa Galatia 3 mstari wa 26 from New Living Translation. Galatians 3:26 and 27. Galatia 3:26-27. We saw that we are children of God through faith. Tuliona kwamba sisi ni wana wa Mungu kupitia imani kwake Kristo Yesu. Now 27. Sasa And all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ like putting on new clothes. Maana nyinyi nyote mliobatizwa katika Kristo mmemvaa Kristo. Ambia jirani yako ushavaa Kristo tayari. Now there is no call to put on Christ here. Hakuna mwito wa kumvaa Kristo hapa. Praise the Lord. It's revealed to us that through baptism we have put on Christ. Tayari tumemvaa Kristo. In Ephesians 4:24 there's a call to put on our new nature. Kuna mwito wa kuvaa asili yetu which is Christ like. Ambao ni kama Kristo. Here we are told hapa tunaambiwa through baptism. Kupitia ubatizo. Not water baptism. Sio ule ubatizo wa maji. And all who have been ba- united with Christ in baptism. Now to baptize means to immerse or to dip in. Kubatiza na maanisha kuzamisha. To be born again means you have been baptized into Christ. Kuzaliwa mara ya pili mna maanisha umebatizwa ndani ya Kristo. Not water baptism. Sio ule ubatizo wa maji. Water baptism is supposed to be an outward show or demonstration of what has happened inwardly. Ubatizo wa maji tu ni udhihirisho wa kile ambacho tayari kimetendeka ndani yao. All who have been united with Christ. Wote walioungwanishwa na Kristo. They are married to Christ. Wameoana na Kristo. They are joined to Christ. Wameunganishwa na Kristo. They have become one with Christ. Wamekuwa kitu kimoja na Kristo. All those ones. Wao wote in baptism so the union comes through the baptism the baptism in Christ is where our oneness with Christ begins our oneness if you are joined to the Lord Jesus you are one spirit with him i believe you are blessed by this ministry through the ministration of God's word and you too can be a blessing to this ministry ambassador chapel by giving offering to support the spreading of the true gospel of Christ through this ministry and you can f- use the following details below to give towards supporting this ministry and the lord bless you as you do that in Jesus name